and welcome to the end time show for our channel i'm gerald we'll be discussing man wants to be genderless alien Baphomet agenda now several days ago on social media there was an explosion and an uproar in regards to this young man Vinio, wanting to make himself into a sexless alien and he's undergone all these plastic surgery procedures he spent close to about fifty thousand dollars in order to obtain his goal to become this alien creature now this is a plan a master plan in the end times of satan to destroy gender roles um satan wants to destroy the identity that god ordained before the foundation of the world where he created male and female where you just have the two genders so now we see in society this Baphomet agenda where men are wanting to become women, women wanting to become men, um, people are wanting to transform from being man to a woman to, I think there's one story out there that a man trans, well, went through a transitioning, was transgender, became a woman, now he wants to become an animal. Now we're seeing this, that Vinny O wants to transitioning from being pretty much androgynous to being a sexless alien and it's all a plot of the enemy the master of this planet who is pulling the strings who is the puppet master now when we look at the Baphomet the Baphomet is a mixture of beast male and female we can see how the Baphomet looks like a ghost but it has female breast and um, male type of characteristics and all and this is the propaganda that's being promoted in the end times also when we look at androgyny androgyny is a spiritual aspect is very much rooted in the occult It's very much rooted in witchcraft It's very much rooted in Gnosticism even when we take a look at Gnosticism I'm going to read from Peter Jones' book, The Gnostic Empire Strikes Back, on page 32 and page 33. I'm going to read a few paragraphs. This says, The serpent and the woman are teachers. The creator and Adam are fools. The inversion of sexual roles leads to sexual confusion. Since evil and foolish creator is male and true divinity is androgynous, it follows that the true Gnostic will finally seek androgyny. This was argued in particular by two Gnostic teachers, Marcus and Theroteus, and was starting point of knowledge of the Gnostic Gnosians, according to the church father Hippotalus. These worshippers of the serpent also believe, against the Genesis account, that the original Adam was a hermaphrodite, appealing to Galatians 3 and 28, which they understood to say, that the new creature, neither male nor female, is a hermaphrodite. Whatever Galatians says, it certainly does not say in Christ believers are both male and female. So we're going to take a look at Vinny's interview. He said some very interesting things. He says based on making his transition, it was based on rebellion. We all know in the scriptures it says rebellion is as the sin of what witchcraft we're going to take a look at also what the Baphomet means in esoteric writings and also what Alesta Crawley had to say about androgyny so this is a plot of the enemy the end game is destruction of the gender. I wanted to understand where this started because you said you don't like being labeled as anything and you didn't really identify with being male or female. Right. Hi, beautifuls. So, um, no, I started my journey on not wanting to have any sort of label to be male or female. I just felt very androgynous and just didn't like people labeling me, calling me all these different things and names. Um, and so I kind of had that rebellious vibe to be like, I'm a freak, I'm um, a weirdo. And then someone, some people came up to me and they were like, well, you kind of look like a Martian. 
And I was like, actually, I think I'm going to use that negativity and positivity and start a Martian thing. And with the whole Martian alien thing, I was like, actually, that's kind of sexy. Let's go with it. So um, I've now adopted this whole alien vibe. Well, it is really rebellious because you're in LA, uh, a city built on looks and beautiful people. Uh, and so, uh, so th this, is, this really is uh, directly opposite to what uh, LA and Hollywood is all about. Yeah, no, it totally is. That's how, how the reason why I moved here. I'm from a very small town um, from Northern California, and so I moved here at a very young age just to get away and be more in an accepting environment. So, so far, because you've had different procedures done, so you've had sort of cheek fillers, brow fillers, lip fillers, Botox, nose procedures, facial peels, so all lots of things here. Nothing too drastic. I mean, there's a lot of makeup that you've got on, you've the hair dye and, and the clothes, and this, that, and the other. The contact it's, lenses. Contact lenses, of course. It's the next step now. And this is your £130,000 worth of surgical plans. And these yes. aren't really reversible. These are permanent. And these involve removing parts of your anatomy that other people hold on to quite tightly. Yes. So my next steps would be to possibly remove my genitals, my nipples, um, my belly button, um, just to kind of give me a complete blank, um, unsexual, sexless look. And so where will you get that done? Can you get that done in the States? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> there are so many um, rules um, and laws against that. Obviously for the safety, it's not done a lot, obviously, so I would be looking more towards uh, two doctors in Sweden and one in Thailand for these procedures. So you're going to be, you're going to be, a, if you do all of this, a completely blank canvas. So what, what, how does that work for relationships? Are you interested in relationships? No, I'm not re interested in relationships. Having a relationship in Los Angeles is not really a possibility, but also for someone that is gender non-conforming, gender non-binary, um, it's hard in general to find someone. So I don't really care about whether someone's going to like fall in love with me or not. I'm more in love with the kids and the community that freaks and to make them not feel so weird. Can I ask you, because this is expensive, um, how are you going to pay for all of this? Uh, saving up. <laughs> <laughs> when you start getting procedures done, like such as Botox and fillers, it's already an upkeep. So that already kind of goes into maybe like just keeping a good hygiene, you can say almost. So um, it's all in a budget. And, um, and so this is, you know, you're, you're uh, uh, young now. What about when you're much older, when you're a 70-year-old alien? Um, are you, uh, are you, uh, is there, is there, is there a, a worry that at any point you might think, ah, oh, I, I knew what I was doing, I uh, still feel like that, but maybe I went too far. I do not see me having any regret when I'm 70 I see myself possibly like adopting children and raising them just totally fine I don't need sexual organs to do so so I don't see myself regretting it no what about your mum and dad because you're very close to your family what do what do they say oh they say that I'm crazy um, but they have so much love and support for me and the only concern that my family and friends have is that I'm safe because I am doing something that's different. This mm. isn't something that has ever been done. If it has, no one knows about it. So they're just concerned for my safety. It's all love. And you have um, a twin, a twin sister. I do, and you, you yes. you couldn't be more opposite, the two of you, could you? <laughs> no, we are so opposite. She is a tan, short surfer. Um, and I am a tall, six-foot, little alien. <laughs> <laughs> so, but opposites are tracks, so we get along just fine. You do realise what's going to happen, don't you? Because if we get invaded, we're going to send you to meet them first. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I'll save the world then. You could save the now, world. When we look at the Baphomet and the Baphomet agenda, the Baphomet is a androgynous 
beast. It's a mixture of beast and male and female. Now we can see how one of the hands of the Baphomet points up, one of the hands points down, as above, so below. Also written on the Baphomet's arm, one arm that's going up is Salve, the other arm going down is Caligula, which in alchemy is a solution of Caligulation, a component of elements being synthesized into a new substance and of the heavenly thereby manifesting into the earthly. Now let's explore a more in-depth look into Salve and Caligula. The word Salve and Caligula on the arms of the Baphomet is a phrase applied to religious and spiritual realm where people's unenlightened beliefs could be broken down and then changed to a more enlightened path that would unite everyone to a perspective that would put everyone into an agreement. Now we're going to take a further look at the connection of the occult magical arts in regards to androgyny. Um, androgyny does have a connection to Gnosticism and occult writings. So in the book, Aleister Crowley, Western Esotericism on page 36, further explores the mindset of Crawley and androgyny in connection to the magical arts. It says, as a self-professed master of the temple, Crawley went on to devise a technique for the systematic destruction of the ego, which he regarded as a barrier to magical progress. During the 1920s, followers at his infamous Abbey of the Lima at Salufu, Sicily, were punished severely if they used the word I. Crawley's insight was sound, but the technique was flawed. He was seeking to undermine the structural operation by which all meaning, including the sense of unique, individual, and gender self, is produced. There can be no I without a clear understanding of that which is not I. And as Crawley put it, so long as I am I, all else must seem hostile. He was pursuing what we might think of as the erisure of difference, and such a erisure is the traditional goal of occultism and conceived as moving beyond the conceptual grip of oppositional dualities, I, thou, self, other, male, female. Crawley was attempting to find a shortcut to one of the highest goals of occultism to return to the lost Eden of wholeness and completion. The notion of human beings as originally whole and androgynous is a persistent motif of occult and magical traditions. Esoteric teachings refer to a race of such beings who, like the biblical Adam and Eve, existed in the world prior to the tragic fall. Modern magical practice recognize the occult significance of masculine, feminine, complementary, and the quest of psychic androgyny is one reading of the alchemist project that advanced members of the Golden Dawn would have understood. Crawley was certainly aware that androgyny had a occult pedigree and it came to have a particular magical significance for him. So we have to make sure that we stand for truth, especially in these last and evil days. The word of God in Genesis 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So don't believe the lies and the hype of Satan, thinking that you can transition yourself into a genderless alien or you can be a man and transition into being a female or you're a woman and you can transition to being a male. That is a perversion of the enemy. It is a sign that we are living in the last days that the spirit of Antichrist is very prevalent and bringing a strong delusion upon individuals up on this planet. We have to make sure we stand on God's word, that we're led by the Holy Spirit, 
and not led by the spirit of this world because if we're led by the spirit of this world we're going to be led into deception and eventually eternal destruction and damnation this is the end time show for our channel god bless